Today I'm going to be talking about information architecture. I love information architecture so much, even though it sounds like this weird words people that aren't in the UX field, but I'm going to explain it to you today. Information architecture is organizing, labeling, structuring information in a sustainable and efficient way. But you could have found that out from the internet. So let's talk about why this is important. And like always, I'm going to use a story. So if you were to go to the grocery store and I were to say, can you get me an apple? How would you find the apple? You'd probably think, okay, it's going to be in the fruits and veggies section and then it's going to be in the fruit section, and then it's going to be in maybe the organic or non-organic section if your grocery store has that. And then you would go and you would pick up your apple. But if I were to ask somebody that lived on a orchard, for example, and I were to ask them to give me an apple, they would not do the same thing that you would do. They would instead say, okay, I'm going to go out to this particular orchard with this apple, and I'm going to go pick the apple and then I'll come back and give it to you. Two totally different ways of getting the same thing. So this apple is a metaphor for information. And the way that you get to the apple is the structure, the way that it, it's been organized basically so that you can find the thing that you're looking for. So why is this important for your business? If you have a website and people are looking to buy the thing that you happen to sell, but they can't actually find it to um, purchase on your website, then you're missing out on sales, right? Like you are missing out on sales just because people are confused. And that's a terrible reason to miss out on sales, right? So instead of trying to guess what people think and the way that they structure things and trying to think like, okay, if a woman wants to buy shoes, we're going to have her go through the woman's section and then go into shoes versus going into the shoes section and then going into woman. The better way is to actually ask your users, right? And there's a lot of different ways you can ask your users, but my favorite way is card sorts. So if you were to look at your website and you took all the different pages on your website and you put them onto index cards, and then you gave it to somebody to organize in the way that their brain works into categories, you would very quickly find out which way they think. And if you were to do this with a lot of different representative users, you would start to see themes and patterns all throughout the cards and start to realize, oh, everybody thinks that shoes happens before women. I really don't know which one it is. You would have to do the research. Information architecture also relates to other things besides just the way that your site is organized in terms of your site map. It's also the way that each page is organized. So what is the most important thing that you're putting at the top of your page and what is the hierarchy of the page that you're putting together? You have to make decisions to decide which is the most important thing, but you should be making those decisions based on what your users think are the most important thing, right? And just because I have lots of energy right now, I also want to talk about taxonomy. So taxonomy and information architecture a lot of times get a little bit muddy together and I want to kind of describe what taxonomy is. And now I'm using big words that really don't matter that much, but the principles of those things do. So taxonomy is the labeling that comes along with your website. So if you were to label something, say if you were making a website for a plastic surgeon and you decided to use the word breast augmentation instead of boob job, you have to make that decision on which word or labeling you're going to use. And the importance of that is you want to make sure that you're actually using the word that the people that you're serving would recognize. So maybe there's a more like technical term for it that is the correct term, but people aren't actually relating to that term, so you need to use the more casual term for that word. Just like I use labeling instead of taxonomy, it's easier to understand. So to bring this all together, information architecture and the organization of it and taxonomy and the labeling, the reason that these things are important is because it makes your website a lot easier to use. And if your website is easier to use, 
you're affecting the user experience and the perception of your business because if it's easy for me to buy from you or it's easy for me to learn information from your website, then it must be easy to do anything else with your business, right? There, there becomes a connection between the two. Obviously, we all know that that's not true, but the opposite certainly is. If it's really difficult for me to find what I'm looking for, and if it's really difficult for me to get around your site or to find the information I need, then I'm certainly not going to want to interact with your business because you've already made it difficult for me and you haven't made it easy. So you're probably going to make my life harder if we continue to interact. So that's why it's important because customers really need to be able to trust you as a business and you need to be able to give them a reason to trust you. I'm going to do that silly little thing that people do just out of curiosity. Don't forget to like the video below and share it with your friends. Have a wonderful day.